Hello everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Route X Lap Attack. We're going to be driving the 1969 Chevrolet Corvette C3 Convertible. This is actually the car's inaugural run. I got it for free while doing uh, one of the menu missions at the cafe. I didn't actually think I was going to get this for free. That's why I bought the uh, other Corvette that you saw in the previous episode. So you could say I'm lucky. I now have two Corvettes of the C3 body style. And this is my favorite one of all time, as I may have mentioned previously. So I'm excited to give this car its very first run. I don't know exactly what time we're going to get, but based off of the previous run, I should say that we might get close to second place. Or maybe this car will surprise me. Since it is a convertible, I mean, the roof's more or less lighter. So we could have a slightly faster time. Anything's possible, right? We can see there that the two Corvettes that we already tested have uh, beaten the two Pontiacs from the first two episodes. This is amusing. I just noticed this. If we go back here, instead of looking at the track conditions like it just forced me to do, you can see that each car from each episode is going faster. Like the Firebird, that was the very first car we tested out in episode one, and that's got the slowest time right now at 623. The GTO is above it, that was the second car we tested. The 63 Corvette's in second, and the 69 Corvette from the previous episode, with its red bumpers and red wheels, is now at the top spot. Like I said, if we don't beat the uh, other Corvette, this convertible Stingray will probably end up getting second. I had to keep this in blue, it's my favorite color for these cars, but unlike the previous Corvette, I decided to keep the wheels and bumpers normal. So instead of painting them red, they are shiny and silver. Unless you guys have a recommendation you want to see this in a different color, the bumpers, I mean. I'm obviously not going to change the color itself. I'm keeping it blue. Okay. So maybe we won't beat the uh, Corvette. We're probably going to be below the GTO. Well, I did recommend, or I didn't recommend, but I guessed that the 63 Corvette was going to end up between the two Pontiacs. So it's amusing to see that this one's going to be ending up between the, uh, those two cars instead. I don't know what it is, but whenever you switch the camera, I like hearing the one sound that pops up immediately after you hit the L1 button. It's like, beep. And of course, like most cars, or all the cars that we've already tested in the previous episodes, we are slowing down. Not by much, though. We only went from 207 to 202, and now we're going back up. We're going downhill as our speed goes up. We might hit 211. Two twelve, even better. And then we're back to two eleven, but as I've noticed with other cars as well, we will increase speed and get the car to a uh, faster speed once we finish going around the first turn with the banking. Seven miles. I just looked down at the odometer, or odometer if you'd like to pronounce it properly, instead of goofing off and pronouncing things wrong on purpose like I just did. The odometer is, why is it seven? It's going to be up at eight soon. Pretty unusual to see that for a uh, 1969 Corvette, or any car from this time period, but there actually was an article I read that... Um, a 1979 Firebird only had 37 miles when it was being sold at an auction. So that's pretty impressive. So, previously I also mentioned that I might have two C4s I was considering doing that, but I decided to change my mind and just keep only one C4 and just make it easier to 
test the other Corvettes that we move on to. The reason I wanted to get a second C4 is because I noticed you can have one that's like this car where the appearance is normal as if it was built straight out of the factory. Or you could get a special rear bumper or spoiler on the back as well as a bigger front bumper as well, I, I think. But if you guys still want me to get a second C4, feel free to leave, let me know in the comments down below if people even know how to do that. I mean, I say that, I've said that before in a few other videos and nobody's left a comment. Hopefully that'll change. Right now we're about to approach the tunnel. I, I, I still can't get enough of that sound when he changed cameras. I'm sorry if that bothers you. I won't do it anymore. It's just, I just had to do that at least one more time. But I will change cameras here. Just looking at the interior front and back, it's always nice. I mean, you can't move the camera around, but what I decided to do was, uh, in order to make room for honking the horn and changing the headlights so that you have the bright beams and low beams, I, uh, I decided to have R3 change to look at the course map or your traction control, all this other stuff, in order to make room for the uh, new horn honking button and a few other things involving the headlights. What I would like, however, is if you could have the camera swing around the car like you see in a few of the uh, Need for Speed games or Grand Theft Auto or Mafia 3 if you also like that. Or if you're like me, Mafia 2. I always like that one better. I mean, Mafia 3 was still pretty fun, but like most players, I just found the, repet the repetition on missions to be a little too generic for my liking. Alright, so we actually got a time... S Wait. Okay, yeah, that is slower than the GTO. We got 523 and we're at 524. So, unfortunately, this is the slowest Corvette... But we still have a C3 that's at the top of the board. That might change with the C4. I hope not, but I do know that the C3's days are numbered despite literally just popping up there in the previous episode. Thank you again for watching, and hopefully you'll stick with me with the C4 in the next episode as we continue celebrating the Corvette's 70th anniversary. Take care, and goodbye.